I know. Okay. I am so pumped for this conversation, probably because I'm still on a high from this past weekend in Monroe, Louisiana, but Molly Fickner, welcome to When the Cleats Come Off. Oh my gosh, Ashley, I'm so excited to be here. I've listened to your podcast. I love it. It's it's surreal to just be even, you know, interviewed by you. Oh gosh. So for those that don't know, we played together for a couple of years for the Dallas Charge. And you were one of those people where I was like, I love this girl. I can't figure out why yet. And then over time, you're just like, you are the most genuine person I've ever met in my entire life. And I'm not joking. You oh. truly are. Oh. Like thank you like it was about time you've been on the podcast geez I should have interviewed you (laughs) season one um but I'm just so pumped to have you here we were just talking how um we had Murph on who was your college coach and he was like I think Molly could definitely run for mayor of Monroe and win (laughs) and I told multiple people that this past weekend and they were like yes she would oh my god (laughs) Oh my God. uh, He's so funny. He's awesome. Yes. Well, we're definitely going to talk a little bit about Murph and um, his influence on your career as a coach and a player. Um, But before we dive into that, let's talk about this past weekend because I I rant about it on social media and I, I don't know if people like know exactly what was going on. They just know softball was happening. So can you give us like your bird's eye view of what this past weekend was all about for you and ULM you know it's uh it's pretty surreal to look back at it to be honest with you Uh, it was just a random idea I had in July I was driving from one field to the next out recruiting and I'm like how cool would it be if we just started calling people we put together a team right of celebrities from all over the country and they we fly them into Monroe and they play our team and and then of course I call Coach Wodak and she's like, all right, well, um, how's that gonna actually work, right? You have some that have been out of you know the game for five or ten years. You've got some that are, you know, gonna be competing in the 2028 Olympics. Hooray for that, right? And you know, current, former, and we don't want anyone to get hurt. We want everyone to have a good time. And so then we just started brainstorming, and we were like, we can do this thing. We'll 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 get creative. And first phone call was Haley McClenney and. She just said, give me the date and I'll be there. And so we started with that. I, of course, called you, had you come out um, and, a, and a lot of other people. And so the most important going into the weekend was, yes, I mean, it was awesome for people from Monroe to come in and, and watch the game and for the community it was incredible. I think the most special was for the players, though, for our student athletes. They were able to hang out and talk with these celebrities for an entire weekend, you know, I mean, we had two hosts, two, two of our players were the hosts for each celebrity and they got to hang out. They got to drive y'all places and pick your brain and those relationships. That's what it was all about. Um, and then rolling out the red carpet for, for you guys, when you got here, th- those were, you know, kind of the two primary goals going into the first year of, we don't know what to expect, but we know one thing they're going to be treated right. And then our players are going to have relationships that are going to last a lifetime. Oh, for sure. And there was a literal red carpet. I was not expecting that when they announced our team. I don't remember who rolled it out, but there was a red carpet outside of the dugout. I'm like, this is literally a rolled out red carpet. But yes, I can't tell you how amazing G and Buck were. They were, they were my, that's their nicknames. Um, But <laughs> they were my hosts for the weekend. And I'm telling you, G especially was like, we are driving you everywhere. Like, I want to spend as much time with you as possible. And uh, they literally, and you know this, but they printed off a picture of me, my husband and our son Barrett from like a Cubs baseball game and framed it. And it was in my hotel room when I showed up and I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, Molly did this. And then I found out that was them. And I'm like, this is the coolest thing. You are such an awesome leader for these athletes. And they're just such good people. They're just such good people. Like, is they it are. is it fun going to work every day, Molly? Oh my gosh, I I love it. It's uh, I tell them all the time that what I want for them more than anything is have a fulfilling career the way I do. And I don't even look at it as a job. Uh, I know Coach Wodak and I talk all the time. She's in the other room about. It, there's just so much fulfillment. It doesn't ever feel like 
work. It's, it's fun. It's, it's exciting. And every morning I get up and I'm so excited to go to work, but of course I'm so upset to leave Renata and the dogs. And then at the end of the day, I'm so excited to go home to Renata and the dogs, but I'm so sad to leave work. And it's like this constant tug of war. And that's what I want for all of them one day, you know, whatever career path they choose is to be able to be as fulfilled as we are in this, in this, you know, where we're at and our student athletes, I mean, they get 98% of the credit for that because they're wonderful human beings. Mm -hmm. You've recruited some amazing ones. Can you share with us a little bit about your softball journey from like, I know you're gonna have to probably think back to when you first started, but I always like having my guests share their journey and their story because it might match up right along with somebody listening. So can you just share a little bit of your journey playing now coaching journey, um, for the audience? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, growing up, like most people that love sports, you kind of play everything, right? Um, very athletic, wanted to be, I say very athletic. Yeah. I had to work for it. Okay. Like it wasn't, it wasn't. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I loved competition. I loved competing no matter if I was good or not. And, um, basketball, tennis, whatever it was, softball and um, right around my seventh grade, eighth grade year, my dad was like, Hey, look, I think you should probably choose a sport and go with it. And, um, I chose softball and around that time as well, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And when I was diagnosed with type one diabetes, it was almost like a, I don't know if she'll ever play. I don't know if she'll ever make it. And, uh, I guess for some reason, the competitor in me was like, Nope. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I can, I can take my ability as far as I can. So I kept working at it, loved the game, loved it. Uh, My parents were extremely supportive. My sister was supportive and um, ended up having the opportunity to go to University of Texas, San Antonio. I was born and raised in Houston, so not far from home. I went there for two incredible years, learned a lot, uh, loved my teammates, loved the location. Um, And then after two years, I decided that college coaching was what I wanted to do. Um, I tried the PT route. I tried the architecture route. Like I tried everything and I'm like, no, coaching's it. You know, what better platform to impact people coaching the sport I love. And um, so after two great years there, I I decided to walk on to the University of Alabama and uh, learn from a Hall of Famer, Patrick Murphy, uh, just about coaching and what it looks like to have a, a, a winning, you know, program, right? How do they, how do they, how do they do this year in and year out? What does it look like? What's different? What's that secret ingredient? And I'll never forget my first day at Alabama. I brought this big old spiral and Murph was writing or talking in it. It's like every single word I was writing down, Ashley, it was hilarious. Just taking it in, taking it in. My teammates were laughing at me and, you know, and I spent two great years there, uh, had some wonderful teammates um, and talking about back, back to the celebrity you know, our girls got to experience what I experienced my first year at Alabama. And I was in the clubhouse and Jessica Mendoza walked in mm. and I, my eyes welted up. Like I was having tears because my team and my teammates were like, Molly, what's wrong? And I'm like, that is Jessica Mendoza. Like, <laughs> she's like in my presence. Right. And I went through that as a player. And now, you know, that's what our girls went through. And and then after that, I jumped straight into coaching, uh, played professional with you, of course, and uh, was a volunteer for Murph uh, after I graduated for one year and went to Dartmouth for two years and then came down to East Carolina. And then uh, at 26 years old, I was hired at Louisiana Monroe as a head coach and been here ever since. Love it. So cool. It's so cool. Wow. That's so amazing. I, n- I didn't hear this Jessica Mendoza story before, so what was it about having her around that, you know, truly, I don't know, helped you just realize that like, whoa, this is a big moment in my career. It just meeting someone. You know, I, I don't cry much, uh, to be honest with you. Like I just don't. Um, and when I walked in, it's, it's almost like a surreal moment of, I've seen you my whole life. I've watched you compete olympics like everything you ever dreamed of it's like this figure right that you know is almost untouchable and then here she is five feet from me saying my name and i'm like oh my gosh she knows my name um and it's just one of those most impactful moments of my life and you know now the cool part is it's it's 360 and now our players got to experience it with you guys you know gianni Mm -hmm. 
after you left Gianni yesterday, she was in the um, leadership center with me and she's pulling out her phone and she's showing me all text thread <laughs> and how excited she is to show me pictures and videos of Barrett. Right. And mm-hmm. I'm like, it's relationships like that, that you're going to remember forever. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was kind of surreal. Cause I don't know. You probably, if you were asked to be a celebrity for this game, you wouldn't be like, you'd probably be like, I'm not a celebrity. I, that's kind of how I felt. I'm just like, okay, Haley McClenney, definitely a celebrity. <laughs> I never really look at myself that way, but you know, to see the impact that just like having a conversation, just a real human conversation with, you know, current athletes in the game, it was just so fun. It was so fun. Cause they, she asked all the questions, you know, like oh, yeah. in a good way, like she just wanted to know, you know, what does it take? to be great. And I even asked her, she's probably gonna be mad that I'm mentioning this. I was just like, how do you feel about this upcoming season? She's like, I'm honestly kind of nervous. And I'm like, okay, why? And she was just kind of telling me, I'm just like, just remember what got you here is what got you here. Get really good at the things that you're good at and just keep just, I know this sounds so cliche, just like every day show up just to get a little bit better. You're not trying to make a giant leap. And like, when you go to compete, like, I don't care how tall you are, because that was one thing she was talking about. I don't care how tall you are. Like yeah. Amanda Scarborough is here. She was an all-American at her height. You know, like it doesn't matter. That is the beautiful thing about this game. If you show up and you compete until your face is blue, you're going to be in a fine place. Trust yeah. me. Which yeah. was actually really funny because with your celebrity team that you guys had, you know, there was two innings where you guys lost and it was um, y'all lost the rabbit race. Yeah. You, you set us up for failure, by the way, with that okay. rabbit race. But here's what's hilarious. So y'all lost that. And then you lost the home run derby. Yeah. All I remember is you guys, as competitive as you were, you were like, there's no way that like, you know, we should have started at second base. We should like, y'all were so competitive. And I'm like, that is the it factor of why y'all are on the celebrity status is because yes. of that, that competitiveness. We, uh-huh. We were not losing, but like, here's the thing. Your, your players this were running on turf. They were wearing cleats so they can actually <laughs> dig into the ground. And also they're running a true home run. We're running a home run from second. So <laughs> that means we have to somehow try to push off of home plate without trying to slip and fall on our face. I was so nervous. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to pancake it. Like there's <laughs> no way like, and it was, yeah, it was funny, but we were, you're right. Like we were yeah. so competitive. Um, oh, and when we lost those two, I remember us getting together and we're like, we are not losing again. Like <laughs> we're still winning. We're finding a way to win, but no, you're right. Like that's, that's what it took. And we did end up winning by the way. Um, yeah. you did, you did. It was, it was so fun. It was fun to see Ray hit a home run. It was just all together. It was just an incredible weekend. It was, I think my favorite moment was when you came out in all of your gear to catch Sid Um, and then you literally got to throw down to Renata and throw out one of your players. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I know. I'm like, surely she's not going to go. I haven't thrown more than 40 feet. I haven't played in 10 years, you know, like all this is going and she takes off and I'm like, oh, here we go. And, you know, I barely got it there. I didn't. It obviously had to bounce, but, um, I mean, you got it done. I remember we, being at first, uh, everybody was talking, telling her like, try to steal, try to steal. Cause you're only in there catching for one inning. So there's like, yeah. just steal. And is she one of your, like, does she steal a lot of bases or no? No, no. no. <laughs> but then still like, I don't care. Like you threw her out. It was so epic and awesome, but how oh, yeah. cool. Just everything about this weekend was amazing. Especially I will say this getting to know, um, keep people in your program that aren't even part of the program. They're just local softball, yeah. huge fans. So can you share a little bit about, um, we got to do a tour of your brand new facilities and you guys have, it's dressed to the nines. Like you have a kitchen in your team room, you have a film room. Like I've never, except for some like top, top programs stepped in a film room in a softball environment, locker room, a little study hall library with a bunch of, you know, books that, you know, I love because they're all mental game books. Like you have turf, you have like an amazing hitting tunnel, a pitching tunnel, like dress to the nines, Molly. But like, I know you didn't do that alone. Can you shout out those people that kind of helped make all of this dream of yours happen? Absolutely. Well, the first person um, is obviously Renata, right? I mean, she's seen me over the past five years and um, has helped me tremendously with certain ideas and things that that I bring home. 
Um, also, Wodak. I mean, Wodak's been with me. You know, the first year was a blur. Um, I don't even remember what happened my first year here. And then, you know, when COVID started and shut everything down, you know, Wodak was with me and she, her and I were the visionaries behind it. Right? We went down there and we're like, what do we need to do? You know, what do we have to do to, to make sure that our current student athletes have what they need and then the future student athletes have what they need? And and then we just started thinking, dreaming big. And, um, you know, all it takes is one person to get excited. And then that one person then tells two people and then those two people tell two more people. And um, it it's it absolutely just erupted more than I ever could have imagined. Um, during a pandemic, we raised one point seven million dollars for a softball program that hadn't won. Wow. Um, and it's just, you know, at least in recent years, I think the last time we had gone to a regional was in the 90s. And so for people to invest and see what we were doing in the community. And um, I attribute a lot of it to our our current student athletes and former student athletes, too, as far as getting out in the community, building those relationships. And then the community members want to give back. And so when you start a big project, um, those communities community members want to get on board because they have these relationships and you saw them now, right? Like they know how to create relationships and then it's hard not to want to support them. Um, and I got to tell you, uh, Marguerite and Daryl Dozier, the one who hosted the brunch, um, they were the ones that actually full circle. They were, they brought the naming rights, uh, Gretchen Stanger and Carol Young for the leadership center. It's called the Stanger Young Leadership Center. Mm -hmm. Marguerite and Daryl Dozier were the ones that brought them to the table. Um, wow. It was insane. We didn't even know them. Wow. Word of yeah. mouth. But like, that's just a testament, Molly, to the type of person you are. Like, I'm not saying you're a saleswoman, but like when you want something, like you know how to get it. You know, <laughs> like if you know this is going to help not just your program, but the athletes that come, you know, during and after, you know, all of this is put together. Like you just know how badly that it's needed and you can get anybody on board. Like, I think it's just a testament. And like the fact that like all of us celebrities came down and like come support, like it was a no brainer in our heads, Molly. Like it was like, I don't care if I have a five month old, like I'm coming down to go play and be a part of your program. Like it is just a testament to who you are. So you're one of the greatest leaders truly from a player standpoint, a coach standpoint that I've ever met in my entire life. And I know there's a lot of coaches um, and parents. I mean, they're obviously leaders of their household that want to be great for their athletes. Um, and I want, I want them to know, like, did this come mostly from Murph? Is this mostly from you? Like, what are all the things, the elements that allowed you to get to this place? Oh gosh, that's a great question. I mean, you know, you are what, what you've been surrounded with your whole life. Right. Um, so I can't really give my, I can't give myself much, you know, props. I think mom and dad, you know, my sister, my family growing up, um, they laid the hammer on me when they needed to, they loved me when they needed to. It was, I couldn't have asked for better support. They came in this weekend. They actually flew in from Nashville, got in the car and drove in to be there for the celebrity weekend too. Um, so their, their leadership's been a, an incredible example for me growing up. And then, of course, you know, I had the privilege, and, and I say this not, but we had a lot of turnover with coaches that I had, you know, before Alabama and then after Alabama. And being able to learn and take, you know, Murph is just incredible. He's perfect, right? Like, if anybody can even aspire to be half the man or woman, you know, to be like him, it's just, that's what you want, right? You want, you want to have the impact that he has on his players and former players. And, um, but everybody else that I played for or coached with, they all had incredible qualities, like incredible Shannon Depp King, who, who I, you know, was an assistant coach for as soon as I left Murph, like great human being, incredible qualities. And so, you know, you just almost kind of create, like, who do you want to be as a coach? And then, you know, write it down. And and I wrote, my, I wrote mine down. You know, if I want players to describe me in 10 years, I want them to say this. And I keep it on my computer. And then, you know, I'll look at it every once in a while, remind myself, why am I doing this? Like, what's important right now? 
Um, so I attribute it to every single person I've come in contact with. I love it. Um, do you mind sharing a few of those things like that you write down that's on your computer or is it private? Oh no. I mean, it's uh, so I, I would say the first thing is, uh, when I wrote it down years ago, it was before I took the head job and I was reading a book. Um, gosh, what was it called? I can't remember right now. And it talked about your qualities, right? So as a leader, you have certain qualities that are really good and you have certain qualities that aren't good. Nobody's perfect at anything. But in order to lead, if you want your team to embody qualities, they have to be your strengths. You can't like, I mean, I can't tell my team to eat the exact amount of protein or vegetables a day because I'm not going to do it, right? So they're not going to buy into it. And so that's where SHIP came from, where you saw that everywhere in our building, SHIP. Yes, selfless. So it stands for selfless, hardworking, impactful, and positive. And so what we what I did was I took those words and I was like, okay, perfect. And, you know, cause I had like 20, you know, things that describe me as a human being. And then I just kind of broke them down and I'm like, okay, ship is perfect because number one, I'm probably one of the most competitive people you ever meet. So championships, right. We're on a quest for championships and you can't get it without the ship. You mm-hmm. got to have those four. I'm also passionate about relationships. I'm also passionate about worship and fellowship. And we're going to have hardships. And what is it going to do to get you through? Um, And so that's kind of what started our identity here uh, when I took the job is them embodying those core values in the best way that they can. And so me as a, you know, as the head coach, I've got to be aware of everything I do has to be in the team's best interest. I got to work harder than anyone. We tell them at the beginning of the year, as hard as you're going to work, I promise our coaching staff will work harder. I've got to constantly make an impact. And then I've also got to be positive, but also be positive in a way that, hey, this is positive for the program. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Mm. Um, So that's a little insight. There's more, but that's just a snippet. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of coaches that don't know how to tell their players what they need to hear Mm -hmm. because they don't, you know, they don't want to be looked at different. They don't want to be judged. But like, how are you able to do that? How are you able to tell your players what they need to hear, not what they want to hear? Um, but do it in a way to where they're on board, you know, yeah. and don't roll their eyes. For sure. Well, the the first part's obviously creating that relationship, right? Like, you know, they they know, and and I would hope that each one of you or each each one of them would, if you asked them if I loved them, they'd say absolutely. Like, there's no question. Um, this is a Murphism that I took from him. Is a phrase called honesty for greatness. Mm. What it means is. If I'm honest with you, you might hate me for two days, but if I lie to you, you'll hate me forever. And so it's this, it's idea of, you know, you might not want to hear what I have to say and you might be pissed at me because I told you something that you don't want to hear. But if I don't tell you and you keep doing it, it's going to affect you forever. And so it kind of, you know, a lot of times when we have these, these challenging conversations, I'll preface with that. Hey, you know, I love you. Honesty for greatness. This is what we need to do moving forward. This is unacceptable or, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But you can't do that without trust. You can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you started with that. And I'm pretty sure he did mention that, but I'm glad it's mentioned again on this podcast (laughs) because that's important. And I think he even shared how before he even says the thing, he's just like, are you ready to hear something that you don't want to hear? Um, And I think, I think that that too is just a testament to, um, you know, not being afraid to hold back because if you do hold back, you're kind of, you're really hurting your team if you're not saying the thing that needs to be said. And I know, I know you've trained your players to kind of take on that role as well. Like, I'm not sure if you have team captains, but I, I know you have some people on your team that aren't afraid to have those types of conversations. How are you able to kind of pass that torch to some athletes on your team that can then do the same to hold their team accountable. How do you, how do you instill that? You know, actually that's been one of the most challenging, you know, I think obstacles that we've had is trying to get them to, Hey, look, friends, you go to the movies with teammates, you go to battle with, Mm -hmm. Uh, right. And when you're on the field, like your teammates. And so what we've, um, what we did was we actually called um, an organization called the program to come in and work our team out in uh, probably the middle of September. So about a month ago. 
And they came in and I told them biggest issue is accountability. It's real easy for the coaches to do it, but we don't see everything. In, and, and the best teams are player led teams, right? They're, they're player led. And uh, they emphasize it over and over. Um, they talked about, you know, you're nice to your friends, but you are kind for your teammates. So being nice is different than being kind. So I could be nice all day and say, hey, you're wonderful. You're beautiful. You're this, you're this. But being kind is saying what you need to say because you're being kind for them. So whatever they need to hear. And it was re it's really neat. And so I think they've really grabbed onto that. Um, and every day since they left that practice, we're, we're working on it more and more of, hey, you've got three seconds to fix the issue. So if we see bad body language, nobody fixes it. You know, hey, right then and there, you have to do whatever. Um, and, and it's not so much, I hate punishment. It's it's more so accountability, awareness of like, hey, what's going around? It's okay to say that, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So what are the type of things in the locker room or on the field that you're praising? Anything, that's good. Anything and everything. Um, so it could be something as small as we played last night. Um, we had a right fielder who went for a ball in foul territory, hit her glove, dropped out, missed it completely. And I tell them the most important three seconds are the three seconds following a mistake where you're embarrassed. Mm. And right away, she looked straight at our pitcher and she said, I got you do it again. I got you. And she goes back to right field. Next pitch, kid hits a laser to right center. And our kid runs over, runs over, catches it behind her back. I mean, incredible catch. And so it's, that's praiseable, right? Not not the error, but the reaction. Um, yeah. We have injured players that bring water to their teammates because they they can't compete, right? They, they bring water to their teammates. That's praiseable. You just have to find it and look for it because a lot of the girls don't realize, you know, what kind of difference you can make in a positive way in whatever situation you're in. Yeah. And that's you leading by example. If you're finding things, positive things to then praise, then it's like you said, like the players will start looking for that stuff. Yep. And yeah, that's definitely a, a leadership by example moment. But how cool is that? Like, I think I got goosebumps when you mentioned to that player, like, Hey, I got you on the next one. Like yeah. this is going to sound so stupid, but I, when I was playing first base this week, at your game um in my head I was like I haven't been here in like eight years so like the whole time I'm just like don't screw up you know like don't <laughs> screw up and I, and I tell my athletes not to say those things but then yeah. at the end of the day I literally would just turn to my teammate to my right to my left who I've never played with before and I'm like Sid I got this one for you and she's just like sounds good <laughs> and like again it's 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 a competitive game but it's definitely the most fun game I think I've ever played in yeah. But like, you know, how cool is it when, you know, you have an alumni come play second base and she yeah. makes this stud play and I yeah. freaking, it, I just did it. I ran up to her. I'd give her a chest bump. I'm like, that was sick. That was awesome. But like, I'm, I'm telling you, and I was nervous in that situation, yeah. I just like put my energy into someone else. And all of a sudden I'm feeling better, you know, yeah, yeah. But, you celebrate the successes of others and you stop worrying about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I finally got to practice the thing that I preach to my athletes all the time, which is so fun. Um, it's insane, but yeah. So I really want to know from, cause you're recruiting, you're getting players to come join your program. I know you mentioned to me, like competitiveness is important. And the fact that you brought in the program proves it, um, yeah. that that's not an easy two days no. <laughs> with the no. program. Um, but what are some of those, you know, intangibles that you want to see that you want to find with a player to come join your program that you're, you know, out on the road looking for players? What are those intangibles? No doubt. Um, so of course, you know, it's, it's real easy to spot talent. That's the number one thing, right? We're, we're, we're here to win games. Okay. And, um, that's why people hire us. And so when we go out recruiting, it's real easy to, to, to spot talent. And it makes me laugh every time I go to a camp and people are like, you know, what do I have to do to stand out? And it's like, be really good at softball. Like if you're really good at softball, you stand out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what we do is we take it one step further. So, okay. We know she's, you know, we know she's really good on the field. 
then we start calling, okay, what, what does other people say about her? Right. What, what do other people think of her, think of her that play with her and play against her. And then when we get them to campus, now we really start the interview process of who she is as a person. So we get her in front of our girls as much as possible. So lunches and, and our girls know same thing with honesty for greatness. If I bring someone in that they're like, coach, it ain't a fit. Their job is to tell me right away. Mm. And it, that that's, that's, it's their team. And um, one of my favorite questions is I'll ask them, what's your greatest strength in softball? So they could say, you know, pitching or hitting or whatever. And so if they say pitching, I'll say, okay. So if I took away pitching tomorrow and you couldn't pitch for the rest of your life, what would you bring to the program? And just smack them with that, right? Like if I took away your best ability on the field, what would you and what could you contribute to our program? And uh, it makes me laugh sometimes. They'll be like, defense and I'm like no 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 like nothing on the field right like if I took that away what would you bring and so then you know we've had some awesome am- answers of you know energy effort excitement you know whatnot and that tells us a lot about you know who they are as people mm, that's awesome that like honestly I got I was like oh my gosh are you asking me this question because I don't know how I'd answer it you know that's <laughs> but that's gold it true yeah. like you will see like because that's not an easy answer for anybody. No, because no. nobody it, wants to think about what could happen. Yeah, and but then, it makes them look deeper. Exactly, and then it you know if they come here, it's like okay, cool. So that intangible that you told me, you bring every single day. Some days you're gonna hit well, some days you're not. But that intangible is consistent. Yeah, and you know, you kind of lay it out right off the bat with the expectations. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, going back on this past weekend, one of the mornings we got to sit down with your team and answer questions. So it's kind of like a panel. So all of us celebrities were in the front. Um, you led a lot of questions, uh, but that was one of my most, my favorite moments from the whole weekend, truly, because I got to learn from those sitting next to me, you know, the competitiveness of each person. What were some of those questions and answers that kind of you in your head are never going to forget? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I think I was so excited to see you guys. Right. So (laughs) the reason I had so many questions was because I had literally written down an entire page of questions because I was so excited, (laughs) right? Like our girls are all nervous and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to ask this, this, this. And I had like 15 questions. Um, but I think one of the best ones, uh, was Odyssey's answer. And, And I don't remember exactly what the question was, but she talks about having an attitude of gratitude. Um, I might have asked her about, you know, pressure and how she sees that in the game. And, you know, when you're doing Athletes Unlimited and it's, you know, pressure to get points and whatnot. And the way she views it with the attitude of gratitude that she had is she's like, man, I get to do this, right? Like, okay, I gave up a home run. Guess what? I, I still get to throw another pitch. Or that to me was incredible. And I know we joked at it when we were at brunch and I was having you guys sign everything with the Sharpies and Odyssey was like, come on, Molly, or something like that. And then someone says to Odyssey, Hey, at least you can write, you know, <laughs> like, and just like, joke. it was hilarious. But, yeah. um, and, and she was just kidding up, obviously, you know, um, but that stuck out to me. And then I loved, um, when Amanda Scarborough was talking about, you know, you're either in or you're out. Like when you say yes, it's either a yes, or when mm-hmm. you say no, it's an absolutely not. And how a lot of us just filter in the middle with certain things where we're unsure. It's like, no, you're either all in or you're all out. There's no in between. And I thought that was really neat. Uh, mm-hmm. Amongst other things, I got tons of notes. So yeah, but- I mean, you had many players that were like you writing down everything that yeah. that came to mind. But that also reminds me, I was talking to someone this weekend. And they were saying how literally in your interview for this job, you walk in with the AD with an entire binder of things (laughs) that you're like, I want to bring this to the table. (laughs) Yeah. I want, this needs to change. And I'm like, that's a testament to who you are. Like you are always trying to make the footsteps that you get to go walk. You're trying to make that moment better this place better 
yeah, than when you found I, it. I most definitely did. I warned them too. You know, I'm like, I don't know, like it, it, we're <laughs> we're gonna be pushing the envelope and you know doing things. And um, the AD that hired me is was incredible, super supportive, and and I'll never forget. You know, we're in a pandemic and Coach Wodak and I have this Excel sheet of a dream leadership center that we have no idea if we'll ever create. And I walk into his office. Um, it was maybe July, early June, or maybe early July, late June and sit down with him. And I'm like, okay, we got a plan. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, we're going to raise money to build this for softball. And all I'm asking is your blessing. I'm not asking for any money. We're going to figure it out. We're in a pandemic. I know it's crazy. And he goes, you do know we're in a pandemic, right? And I go, yes, sir. Yeah, challenge accepted, right? Like, I just I just need your blessing. And he kind of looked at me, looked away, and he's like, okay, go for it. Have fun. And then, you know, six weeks later, I'm in his office, and he's like, how much have you raised? And we're like, $847,000. And he's like, what? You know, and his support throughout all of it, um, and even our, our athletic director now, their support is – is unreal. Um, even when, you know, there's some limitations with what we can and can't do from, from a budgetary standpoint. Um, but of course we think outside the box, um, at the end of the day, our young ladies know that, that not having the money is not going to be a reason that we don't do something that they need. Um, and we'll figure it out, whatever we have to do. Mm. Okay. I have to ask, what are the key elements to raising 800 and what'd you say? $47,000 in six weeks? Like, I, I know, and I know how much you love your community of Monroe. Like I literally asked you the question. I'm just like, how is it here? And you're like, these are the salt of the earth type of people. Like, tell me about this. I need to know. They are. Um, I tell every recruit. So like, how do you describe Monroe? And I'm like, it's a big hug from your grandmother. That, I, that's what it is. It's a big hug from grandma. Um, there's nothing flashy. We don't have a five-star mall right? We don't have anything like that. We don't need it. You know, we've got the people and that's the most important part. And um, it it started big with, um, of course, the the naming rights, the facility. And then once we secured the anchors, which was Gretchen and Carol, when they, you know, agreed to do the naming rights, at that point, that was a good chunk of money. And we started doing um, individual meetings with, with community members. So I had a whole PowerPoint maybe 25 slides of what this is going to do. What do we currently have? What do we need? And, you know, kind of giving them a vision and I'll never forget. We'd be sitting there and then um, they're like, well, how much you need? And I'm like, it depends. Like, what can you do? And, you know, it was like 50, 100, 25, 50. And we had a, a couple and one meeting and then a, the brother of that couple in another meeting. So there's two couples in a meeting once and, I get done with the PowerPoint and then the brother, he goes and he whispers into his wife's ear and then his wife looks at me and his wife's like, okay. And the the brother says, we're going to, you know, do $25,000 right away. And this was like 30 seconds after I got done. And then the brother looks at his sister, who's the other couple, right? And he looks at his sister and he goes, you matching or what? Just like that. So like within two minutes, I mean, it was like 50 grand, just, I mean, right away. And then, you know, and then when you get in these rooms and you're talking about, Hey, this is how much we've raised already. And people get excited and and they can see it with you and share the vision and feel it. And then they get attached and they love our players. And it's, it's, it's a no brainer. There is so much loyalty in Monroe so much, but it's a testament to sharing, you know, what the vision and how you can like see the, if you can see the vision clearly and the purpose of the vision and get excited about the vision, the amount of buy-in you can surround yourself with is insane. Like your players were so grateful to show us around your new facility. Like they were like, look at this element. Like, look how it says ship on the wall. Like this, this is our, you know, this is what we live by. And like, they were so bought in. Yeah. Like how cool was it to take down the curtain and show them what you, but also they have built. Yep. A hundred percent. It's, it's them. I mean, one of the graphics, I don't know if you remember the graphic in the lounge, uh, it's got the big photo of the team. And then it says, if gratitude is all you have, then that's enough. Um, mm. 
And I'll never forget, we do a quote before every practice since I've been here. Quote before the practice and we get after it. And we have a senior, Madison Blunt, on the team. And one day it was me and a couple of players and we're talking about the quotes every day. And I'm like, do you guys even remember any quotes? Like, what's your favorite one? You know, and, and Madison Blunt literally says, if gratitude is all you have, then that's enough. And I was like, when was that? It was two years earlier. And I was like, okay, that's stuck with her. That's going in there. Mm. And so they created it right? Like the sayings, all of that, like they've created that. We just, you know, we just put it in there. Um, and you know, the grand opening, when we opened the facility last August, we invited all the community out there. So we had probably 350 people out in right field. And, um, what we did was the players, it was a surprise for them. So they had never been in it. So we do the grand opening, we have the event, we cut the ribbon as a group with everybody. Well, then as everyone ate, our players got to go through it for the first time with us while mm. everybody was eating. And so they got to see it for the first time. And then when they were done, they got to give the tours to all the community members and everybody that came. Wow. So it's even more special because they're so excited that some of these some of them are donors and they don't know it. And they're like, look at this, look at this. And, you know, the donors are sitting back saying, yeah, I paid for that. You know? That's my room. Like <laughs> That's my room, right? Yeah. Um, so just, just incredible. Um, I, I'm telling you right now, like as young as I am, not many people ever get to experience what we've experienced here in a lifetime and being a part of it. I could give the tour and coach Wodak gets really mad at me with recruits because I try to keep it short, but every room in there has a story and it could take me two hours to walk through every room and explain everything about every meeting and, you know, every moment that that room that that's created a facility. Um, and I haven't given it to the team, um, you know, because obviously we're waiting on that to to get more care hours, so to say. Right. Sure. Um, but it's just unbelievable. Mm. That's so neat. And again, your players just, they, they're still in awe, you know, it's a year later, they're still in awe of what they get to walk into. And I don't think they take it for granted, Molly. I really don't. How, how are you going to make sure that like five years from now, it's not taken for granted 10 years from now, it's not taken for granted. You know, I, I, that, that is something that we've talked about, right. Where, you know, the, the recruits coming in now, this is their expectation right? Like this is what they've always seen. They, they haven't seen before. Um, I think it's important to keep the alumni involved, right? Yeah. And like hey, this is what it used to be, like you guys have it good to give that perspective. I think one of the biggest perspectives was this weekend when you guys came in and seeing you guys in awe with your, with your accolades and, and accomplishments and y'all are in awe with it. It makes the girls even more appreciative because they're like, wow, yeah, I was kind of getting used to it. And, you know, and they're constantly reminded too. So, you know, those little things, uh, but, you know, the minute they take it for granted, they ain't going to have it. You know what I mean? Right. No, I know you would instill We're gonna lock it up. <laughs> I think the funniest thing is that like, from you as a teammate, you are like the sweetest, kindest. I don't think I've ever heard you yell in my entire life. And we're asking your players, like, does Molly yell? And they're like, oh, Molly yells. Like, <laughs> She doesn't yell a lot, but when she does, like we are all deer in headlights and they talk about yeah. the bane, but oh. I mean, <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I think clearly you're going to make sure those standards are taken care of. But I think that's one of the most important things that when you have something great is to hold on to it and pretend like it's new every single day, you know, like, and it's, it's tough in this society, Ashley. I mean, 10 seconds and you're scrolling to the next thing right on whether yeah. it's TikTok or Facebook or it's just everything it's like what what's next what's next what's next nothing nothing sticks like it used to mm -hmm. and that's why I've spent a lot of this time talking about this facility because not many programs have it this good like yeah. you have built something incredibly special in yeah. Monroe Louisiana like let's go like let's go. I think it's incredible and so um yeah I remember walking into each one of those rooms just going what 
<laughs> like <laughs> my first field at Purdue, we were, we literally had an outhouse to use the restroom in. And like, now we have this really expensive facility, but like it's, it's perspective. Yeah. But we all were pumped to see it. It's oh. especially, I mean, especially that video room. Come on. Like that, <laughs> that's sick. That's yeah. sick. Um, what's to come? What's to come oh, for you, ULM? You know, that's a great question. Um, well, I can tell you we've hit more home runs this fall than I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> so that's obviously exciting with our new hitting coach, Daniel Shipley. He's doing an unbelievable job. Um, you know, we definitely have the athletes. There's no doubt about it. Um, we're getting better athletes year in and year out, especially, you know, with with um, facilities comes, you know, high caliber athletes. And um, truly. So they're, they're filtering in now. We've got a great freshman group. We've got some incredible transfers that came in um, from junior college and they're winners, right? One of the junior college girls that we brought in, she's won the national championship two years in a row. She wow. doesn't know anything but winning. Um, and that's Love what it. we want. You know, that's, that's what we want is to, to change that mindset into a winning program. Um, there's also some facility upgrades that we still have coming um, that, uh, you know, adding extra seating in the outfield, student section, closing in the batting cage, things like that. Um, of course, one day we'd love a stadium. Um, I, I don't know when that's going to happen uh, or what the timeline looks on that. Uh, but I know that, you know, that would be great to to add more seating because I think you saw this week and we had a lot of people standing out there just for the first ever celebrity game. Uh, so we might have to change venues next year considering – you know, how much hype there was uh, afterwards. I know people have written about it, called me, asked me what in the world. I've gotten emails about how did you even do it? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like, it was all them. It's the celebrities. You, you know, dreamed it and you got the right people behind you. Uh, it's, that's, I, I was telling my parents about this too. I'm like, you know, I don't know if there's another sport and there could be, right? But I don't know if there's another sport that you can pick up the phone and just call 11 celebrities like y'all and each one of them pick up and say you just tell me when and where like that doesn't happen you know um and so I, I love it for softball you know I love it for you know you guys and of course growing the game and I uh, hope that we can uh continue doing it you will you will and if anybody can do it we know Molly can do it 100 percent hundred percent. No, truly you have, you are one of the biggest lights as a human that I've ever met. Like you just instill every, everyone you touch literally becomes better because of Aww. you. So I'm just honored that you could be on the show today. Are you okay? If I ask you five rapid fire questions, I call them five to thrive. Let's get it. To wrap us up today. Okay. Fantastic. I was saying this before. I'm like, if anybody can do it, it's Molly. It's it's go time. This is, this is your new game. This is your new challenge. Um, first and foremost, what was the wildest game you've ever played in before? Dying to know. Wildest game. I want to say oh. from a playing aspect. From a playing aspect. Um, probably playing Kentucky in the women's college world series, my senior year. Mm. It was wild um, with how many people were on base for them and how many times we kept getting out of innings. And I'll never forget, we were like in the seventh inning. We were up two to zero. They were home. Bases are loaded, no outs. And I'm like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And um, Coach Steph Van Brakel, pro throw, who's at Memphis, she, she was a pitching coach. She walked out and she said, okay, this is what's going to happen. Jackie, you're going to strike her out with an off-speed drop. And then, Danae, I want you at the middle. You and Hunt are going to turn a double play, and then we're going to end the inning. And she walks back to the dugout. And I'm, like, sitting there, Ashley, and I'm like, Jackie, did you hear that? Like, is that what we're really doing? Right? She walks back to the dugout. Next pitch, off-speed drop. Kid swings and misses. Strike. Okay, out. She's out. Strike three. Next kid fists a base. Not a base hit, but fists a ground ball up the middle. Hunt and Danae turn a double play. We get out of the inning. I like wild. <laughs> what just happened? But other than that, I don't, I, I don't remember too many memories other than that. I just, I was like, holy smokes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's insane. I think, um, 
you know, when it comes down to it, you are probably one of the players that like understands the game more than anyone. You're just always been a student of the game, but as a catcher, you have to see the game differently, like truly. And we didn't talk a whole lot about catching. Maybe next time you're on, we can talk more about like the strategy of the game and um, being behind the plate. But what is an element of catching that you love most? Why do you love being a catcher? <clears throat> yeah, that's a great question. I, I did try to pitch at one point and, you know, I got about two, two pitches in and my dad was like, I'm sick of playing fetch. I want to play catch and put some gear on. Right. <laughs> I love um, your dad. Talk about uh, parents keeping us humble. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and I, I just loved it. I loved being able to, to see the field and read it. Um, I think one of my most favorite parts of catching was managing personnel. Right. And that, that's what I think, um, a lot of catchers, you know, you look at the major league baseball or you look at, you know, incredible coaches and a lot of them have been catchers. You know, you look at Leah Wodak, she's an incredible coach and she was a catcher. It's managing the personnel, ma- managing the personalities of who, do, who can you push? Who do you have to give a little bit more love to? And then what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And then tailoring that to their physical ability. Mm. Um, that's one thing that I just loved about catching was trying to figure out, you know, what pitchers needed when you go out, you call time, this pitcher might need this, this pitcher might need this. What do they need? What is their body saying? What can I do to help get the most out of their performance? Mm, Yeah. You got, I never thought about catching that way. Catching was that one thing where it was like your pitching experience. I I tried it one inning and I (laughs) blinked every time (laughs) and I like missed it. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, (laughs) But no, you're right. Like you got to have like the eagle eye and like yeah. see what's going on and manage everything. And yeah, I don't think that's ever been mentioned on the podcast. So if if y'all didn't hear that, rewind a few seconds and re-listen to that because that is huge. Um, I know you love Murph more than pff, a lot of people in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, what is, if you could take one lesson from him, just one, you can only take one, what would it be? Mm, there's so many good Murphisms, Ashley. This is really challenging. I know um, we had him on the podcast, dropping them every five seconds. <laughs> gosh, you know, I'd probably say with Murph, I think one thing that sums him up the most that everybody admires is when he says the best is yet to come. It doesn't matter where you are in life. If you've hit the jackpot, if you've won the national championship, if you've lost the national championship, he's going to say the best is yet to come. And I think when you look at it now, looking back, you know, at, at a little bit older and out of it is he was giving hope and he constantly gives hope and he gives inspiration that tomorrow will be better than today. And it just gives you like this feeling of, heck yeah, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to mm. keep going. I'm going to keep going. And so I think that sums Murph up. Um, He, I mean, just last week I got a letter in the mail from Murph and he just wrote me a handwritten note and just wanted to say hello and tell me he was proud of me. He's got a lot going on, you know, and the fact that he would just sit there and write a card and send it and it's got meaning, you know, there's meaning behind it. Uh, I just, he's the most incredible mentor. The best decision of my life was going and learning under Murph. There's no mm. doubt about it. That's so cool. I'll have to replay this one, this part for him. Oh yeah. <laughs> but he'll never take the credit. That's the amazing thing. He's so, he's so humble. Um, yeah. But yeah, I never played for him, <laughs> but I'm like, you're a mentor to me. Like, I just, yeah. I just want to, I just want to learn from him. I don't, I don't blame you for bringing a notebook in and writing down everything that he says um, yeah. at all. But I think that's absolutely incredible and a testament to, um, you know, it's, is it a huge reason? Is he a huge reason why you coach? No doubt. I mean, there, there, I think he changed the why behind coaching for me. I think I always knew I wanted to coach, but I didn't understand the impact that you could make. I just knew I loved the game. And then when I saw what he did and and how he coached and the intangibles he brought, I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't just, this isn't just a job. We're mm-hmm. not here just when we're here to make an impact and this is what that looks like yeah yeah that's so great I love that answer 
Um, I'm switching up. I, I was going to ask you something, but I want to ask you a different question. How would you define leadership? Ooh, good leadership, I should say. Good leadership. So <laughs> it's funny you asked me because in the program, you know, we had leadership defined for us. Um, and I think it's great. Uh, I'm going to give you their verbiage and then I'll probably do a little bit in my terms of it. But number one is accomplishing the mission. Mm-hmm. And then number two is taking care of your people. And in that order. So at the end of the day, a leader, your job is to make sure that you accomplish whatever's in front of you, whatever that looks like. So, you know, if it's you got to do this drill correctly or this, you have to make sure that you, your your team does it. And then secondly, you got to take care of your people. So with that being said, you know, to me, and I'm, I'm going to be vulnerable here for a second, is sometimes I flip the two because I just want to take care of everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure they're taken care of you know, at all costs, at the end of the day, I'm still learning too as a leader. But I think that with the program defining that for leadership, it makes it real easy. Um, There's so many definitions that I've gotten about leadership from books. And I I read just like you, right? Um, And I take bits and pieces here and there. And um, I would say leadership is not a license to do less. It's always going to be a responsibility to do more. Mm. There's no doubt. So can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, that was gold. Oh, you like that? (laughs) Leadership is not a license to do less. It's always a responsibility to do more. And so, yeah, Mm, such a good answer. Can I ask you a question? How How, would you? How would I define leadership? Well, it's funny because I took the program twice, (laughs) and I Ah. also, I also coached a team that also went through the program. I, you can't really top that, you know, and I, I do feel myself in the same shoes as you in regards to, I just want to make sure everybody's, you know, taken care of before myself, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and like, there is an amount of selflessness that's important to be a leader. Like I will give you the shirt off my back, but back to the mission, like it's in order to accomplish the mission, you know, yeah. like when you can kind of put those two together. Yeah. Hands down. I mean, I, I like to associate definitions with people. And like, I know we've talked about Murph a ton, but like you, even you, I've said this already twice, three times on this podcast, like you in my mind are one of the greatest leaders. And it's because you, you're competitive, which is great, but also you want success, not just for yourself, but for everybody that you're touching, you know, like you can see that and envision that. So I think there's so many definitions you can, you can say for leadership, but yeah, if you want to get things done and you get the right people behind you, like I asked Murph the same question and he was, uh, he talked about the video where it's like at a concert. I I think he said he played it like every single year where there's just like one random dude, just like dancing really obnoxiously and silly. (laughs) And then on the hill and, um, then the next person comes up and then they start doing it. And then all of a sudden it just like trickles and everybody at this concert starts dancing like that. Like it just like nobody yeah. asked them to do it, but here we are, you know, yep. Yep. but yeah, creating, creating good followers is also, I think, a an important part of leadership, but I've never been asked a question on this podcast. So thank you. Thank oh. you for being the first, um, truly honored. Okay. So that was four questions. I have one more for you. And I also asked Murph this question. How do you hope that your players leave your program? Oh man. Um, better than they came in. Right. Um, whatever that looks like, I want them to leave confident. I want them to leave knowing that they can achieve anything that they want to. Um, and that's, that's to me, the most important thing. Um, if they leave with a career high batting average in ULM history, but, you know, they're a two cent character person. I didn't do my job, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, in a, in a perfect world, they're, they're a better human being. Um, and they've got a ring on one finger and a diploma on the other hand, mm-hmm. right. In the other hand. So I'd say that's probably the most important to me and then sustaining those relationships over the years. And, um, I think one of the neatest things is I've got players from last year that graduated out, which was the first class I came in with and they've got job opportunities all over, you know, the surrounding States and they decide to stay in Monroe, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. 
like that's awesome you know that's that's awesome and they want to give back to the program and do anything they can to help and um you know it's just that kind of stuff that's incredibly special that's yeah. that's amazing and i think along with what you just said is you know those those people that you're like helping you know flourish and like their little caterpillars when they come in and they become these butterflies it's like every kid's different yeah. but like i'm sure you're one of those leaders that like pours so much into each individual because they're all different but they they're definitely coming out better oh well they're definitely I, coming I, out better i hope so it's fun to watch and and i'm sure murph um you know sees this as well we've never talked about it but you know, the freshman year, they come in and they're shy and they're nervous. And, you know, you tell them, hey, when you meet a stranger, your job is to give them a good handshake and you teach them how to give a proper handshake. Right. And eight steps to a proper handshake. Thank you, Patrick Murphy. Right. Taught me and mm -hmm. everybody else. And you see their freshman year, they get so nervous and they're still like, you know, kind of timid. And and then you watch the development until they're, and, you know, and now they're a senior. And it is like they are going up to people and just, hey, you know, my name is Molly Fickner. Great to meet you. And they're just so confident. There's a different aura about them. And that, to me, is fun to watch, too. Like, as they develop and they become more confident and, and you know, more in tune to who they are as people, it's it's great. I should ask Murph if he ever has noticed that. I'm sure he has. Yeah, I'm sure he has. It's a beautiful thing. And you're a beautiful human. I'm so grateful that you could spend part of your day with us. This has been oh. such a fun conversation. And will you come back again and talk about, you know, leadership behind the plate and catching? Oh my gosh. Whenever, actually, I would do anything for you. This podcast <laughs> is awesome. Um, I appreciate all you're doing for the sport. I know we talked about it as celebrities and, and I know Amanda Scarborough had incredible things to say about you in front of everyone about what you're doing for the youth and everybody else, parents that are going through this process. And it's just, we need more people like you. Can we mm. just, you know, can we, uh, what is it called? Uh, just give five Ashley Burkhardt eagles right here. <laughs> sure. as as I think we need a bunch of Molly's too. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody needs a Molly in their life, but no, incredibly grateful to have you on incredibly grateful to be invited to come down. I will, I will definitely be back with Barrett and we will be running the bases together. No doubt. Oh. Sounds awesome, Ashley. Thank no you doubt. so much for having me. I love you, friend. All right, love you. Bye.